Yo. The f went wrong out there. What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite. For a massive video here tonight, we have the confirmed release date for the next big update, some content that may release early, as well as what is easily the most insane DLC yet. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and be sure to use code DYNAMITE if you want to save 10% on any control free quarters. Their link is, of course, down below in the description. I'm sure you guys saw the rumor a couple of hours ago about Call of Duty 2021. The code name for that game is apparently Vanguard, which is a bit ironic considering the code name of Black Ops Cold War was Zeus, so I wonder what Vanguard could mean in the long run. However, it is a bit risky now that the information is out there since people could get in trouble behind the scenes. Hopefully nothing serious happens, but now that it's public, I'll be talking more about this in a separate video since I have quite a bit to say about Vanguard that wouldn't fit the theme of tonight's video. But starting off with what is easily the most insane DLC yet, so yesterday we had the release of the Necro King bundle for 2400 COD points. You're probably also confused by the thumbnail of this video. Fajardi went all out with the creativity on this one. We actually had this done for a couple of weeks now as we were anticipating the necro king bundle so we used an unreleased adler skin which kind of resembles thor a little bit so we're like hey maybe he's worthy and we gave him mjolnir thor's hammer of course and it fit perfectly with the brand new ice drake mastercraft for the krig and this bundle of course comes with quite a bit of content to be honest with you we have the ice drake mastercraft which has crowd dismemberment tracers they're a bit purple we have the cold spear m60 variant the dragonstone charm a dead sled vehicle skin the animated Frozen Waste Calling Card, the Necro King Emblem, the Necromancer Accessory, and of course the Climatic Vehicle Horn. And it's quite a bit of value in a single pack, but I will tell you guys something that many of you probably didn't know. If you go ahead and buy the Gilded Age Stitch Bundle right now for $20, it actually gives you 2,400 COD points in that bundle. So the bundle itself has a value of about $40. So I would recommend buying that badass Gold Stitch skin, and then you can essentially buy the Necro King Bundle for free with the 2,400 COD points points that Stitch came with, so that's the way I would do it if you guys really want this pack. Definitely worth it, but once this got announced, I was kind of interested in how the community was like, the Krig sucks, the Krig sucks, it's a horrible weapon, I'm not gonna buy this, and I'm like, are you talking about Warzone? Because this thing shreds in Black Ops Gold or multiplayer. I was gonna sweat a nuke out with this new Mastercraft, but I'll have to save that for another time, since earlier today, all my lobbies were filled with professional snipers, Face Timothys, and I'm like, I'm just not having it, I need to relax, have a nice night, and just post this video here for you guys. So I had some good gameplay already lined up hopefully you guys enjoy that but maybe one day you can also support a creator with code dynamite over in the call of duty shop fingers crossed for that one but there was also an issue with this bundle which i noticed on stream yesterday so if you equip the brand new ice drake craig over in warzone nothing happens right you just equip your loadout and doesn't even give you the weapon and i'm like what happened? So apparently, the barrel on this thing doesn't work properly in Warzone, therefore it doesn't give you the weapon when you equip your loadout. So just change the barrel on this thing if you bought the bundle, and you'll be able to use it in Warzone. And the Krig isn't great in Warzone, I definitely acknowledge that compared to other weapons, but at least in Cold War Multiplayer, it's fun. Now if you use this thing in Zombies, you'll notice that you're limited to just Cryo Freeze when you pack a punch of this and want to equip an AAT, and maybe that was intentional considering the Cryo Dismemberment effects that this bundle comes with. Maybe they'll fix that in the future but for right now there is some continuity going on with the cryo effects on this mastercraft but overall a fantastic purchase and if you go ahead and use this in warzone let me know how you feel about it because it isn't great but if people are a bit damaged you can get some pretty cool kills with this it looks fantastic but we also have an update regarding double xp we have a triple double event starting on march 26 so this upcoming friday it's coming with double xp double weapon xp and double battle pass xp all in a single day lasting until march 29 for Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. So take advantage while you guys can if you haven't finished your Battle Pass yet or haven't hit Prestige Master for this current season because the season only has about, what, a month left? April the 22nd is the supposed start of Season 3. So take advantage of this while you guys can. PlayStation players also get 24 hours of early access to double XP starting on March 25th as well. So I know that might be a bit frustrating to you guys, but think about it, right? That is something very minor compared to an entire map, let's say, being locked behind PlayStation exclusivity 
connectivity. Onslaught already isn't something that Xbox and PC are really missing out on. It's not great, but that's better than, let's say, Dead Ops Arcade 3 or a survival map being locked behind just PlayStation. Hopefully, they keep the deals like this very minimal, but we then got an update regarding the R1 Shadow Hunter crossbow earlier, so it's confirmed to drop this week on March 25th, and they confirmed that if you went ahead and unlocked this legitimately when it released early a couple of days ago, then when this releases officially this week, you'll be at 14 out of 15 kills, I should say, a part of the challenge, which is to get, I think it's three one-shot kills in a single match in 15 different games. You'll be at 14 out of 15, which is a huge help. You only have to get one more match done with three one-shot kills, which is pretty nice of them to do. They definitely acknowledged that the thing was unlocked early for eight hours by mistake. So of course, people out there unlocked it legitimately or bought the bundle that you can unlock it instantly with. And that bundle also releases later this week as well. As confirmed earlier in the blog post, nothing else is really happening this week, which is a bit disappointing, right? The mid-season update for season two isn't actually this week, but is going to be next week. So earlier today, Treyarch tweeted out the following GIF of Outbreak Sanatorium. So, you know, we're gonna get more of these GIFs probably over the next week or so, but as they said in the caption, next week, new mysteries of the Dark Aether await. So that confirms the mid-season update won't be this week, unfortunately, but the following. So if it's going to be the following Thursday, that's April 1st. So I'm wondering if Treyarch has any surprises up their sleeves for April Fool's Day. That would be pretty funny. But like I said on stream, I am shocked that they went with April the 1st instead of the March 25th date that I thought of. Since April Fool's is a bit silly to drop new content on, right? You never know what's legit and what isn't. But let's just see what happens if they drop a separate roadmap for the next update. It might not be the reloaded update of the season, but still the mid-season update with the remaining content from the roadmap. There still is time for reloaded updates before April 22nd, plenty of time that is, so maybe April the 8th or the 15th will end up getting a separate update with some bonus surprises, but if you take a look at the gift they released earlier for Sanatorium, it looks like the map is taking place at night now for Outbreak, but the previous gift from the other day definitely was in the daytime, so maybe it's one of the objectives they're going to add in on Sanatorium that could bring us to a nighttime version of the map, or maybe a Dark Aether holdout will have us outside in a secluded area, and maybe the sun went down during that objective. I don't know what that could mean, but hey, nighttime sanatorium sounds exciting, considering we're going to see daytime Miami at some point during the mid-season update, right? Miami Strike does, of course, drop at some point, maybe April 1st, whenever this update releases, but I'm excited for Outbreak Sanatorium. I'm wondering what new objectives that map brings to the table for the mode, and like I said in a previous video, right, whenever they add in more map to Outbreak in the future. I'm curious if we'll see a separate playlist for them, since right now we're going to have Ruka, Alpine, Golova, then Sanatorium. So that's four maps. Maybe they'll limit it to just four at a time, and then when the next set of four maps drops in a future season, they'll have that playable and a separate playlist, because how is the Easter egg going to work for Outbreak Zombies now? That's the big question, but what I really want to talk about is whether or not the Outbreak Easter egg might release early. So maybe instead of dropping it during Season 3 like they originally announced, they can drop that Easter egg for Zombies fans that are awaiting new content during the mid-season update if the easter egg is ready. I mean, we have Treyarch devs out there teasing something big for Sanatorium, so I'm sure they aren't just talking about this one map being added to Outbreak. Maybe the entire easter egg will go live now that Sanatorium's releasing, because maybe the easter egg is a cross-map thing, right? You have to do the easter egg by playing on all four maps in a single match. You have to go from map to map to collect different artifacts or do certain objectives or something special that requires you to teleport from area to area, and maybe Sanatorium was the missing component of whatever this easter egg is. Maybe they originally planned on releasing Sanatorium during Season 3 with the easter egg, but they're like, you know what, things are ready now, let's just drop this at this moment in time. So with that, if they drop the easter egg in the mid-season update of Season 2, they could end up dropping the Berlin DLC 2 Zombies map with the start of Season 3. I feel like waiting until Season 3 Reloaded is kind of far away for Zombies players out there anticipating brand new maps. I think Season 4 Reloaded makes sense for maybe DLC 3, but I think it's time for a new Zombies map, right? And, you know, Treyarch originally planned on dropping Firebase Z during Season 2, but they pulled that forward during Season 1 Reloaded, so definitely wouldn't be surprised if content's already done ahead of schedule, and they're like, whatever, let's just drop it, right? It's ready to go. Let's just do that for Zombies players out there who are quote-unquote dry on content at the moment, so fingers crossed for that, but we also have a number of locations for the Zombies Outbreak in Verdansk, which surfaced earlier today, and I know you guys are probably super bored of this event by now, right? But we have Zombies going to the following locations in no specific order. The bank, the dam, the TV station, Superstore, and the stadium.
them. So that's at least five more weeks of this zombies outbreak. And again, if they have it to where zombies can spread to multiple locations at once, that speeds things up a bit, right? The number is still at 5% in Verdansk right now for the entirety of the outbreak. And I'm like, when is that going to hit at least 80% when at that point, a nuke is justified to get rid of Verdansk? It might take a little while. So they're probably going to drag this out until the very ending of the season when a nuke event should probably happen. Because don't forget, we have the Zombies Plague event, which also hasn't released yet over in Warzone. And that apparently is going to have us trying to Xville once the zombies take over, but the Xville fails and Verdansk gets nuked. So I'm not sure how storyline wise it's going to work, but it's a separate mode that I believe will see us playing on a potential nuked out post apocalyptic Verdansk. You know, at this point, a lot of people are losing interest because of how slow the event is moving along. I think, you know, on paper, it sounds fantastic, but the way it's being executed is just not attracting people's attention. So by the time this nuke event happens, hopefully you guys are still hyped about it. I'll be streaming it. I'm excited to see the, you know, next step for Warzone, the Treyarch Warzone map, because I want to see something on the scale of Blackout, where the map's colorful, you can swim, there's memorable locations, or you can do some zombies Easter eggs. I want to see something real exciting that I believe Treyarch is working on right now. And from what we heard about the next Warzone map thus far, it sounds incredible. I mean, it's going to bring us gameplay opportunities that Verdansk just didn't have to offer. And I don't have a problem with Warzone either. Like I've stressed many times in the past, I don't mind the gunplay, the engine, the sliding. I enjoy it. I mean, I love Rebirth. I've had a ton of fun playing it on stream. But looking at the fire team maps and how they're laid out, I love those maps. So seeing that combined for the next Warzone experience really has me excited. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the brand new Necro King bundle over in Blackout's Cold War. How do you feel about the confirmed release dates for the mid-season updates? And what are you feeling in regards to the Outbreak Easter egg? Should it release early? Should they wait until season three? Leave all your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.